and Nick got swallowed <laughs> by Moby Dick. No joke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. Welcome to the Wow, that I came in on a roaring fire of carpet flying through Aladdin's land. Oh my god, what the just happened? <clears throat> Welcome to the Yeah, God, I'm still I'm slurring. God, that's not good. It's not a good look on me. We're gonna put this as a cold open, or we'll keep it right Dude, here. Do you want to re-roll the thing and then start over again? <laughs> Rerolling. <laughs> God, I cannot get I cannot get over that intro. How did we get sexy? Wish.com Henry Cavill. How did we do it? I don't know. Welcome to Credentials. God damn it. You're <laughs> you're pulling a mat and that's fine. It helps. <laughs> and maybe I'll clip whatever the hell it is you said, but I'm gonna scrub over it right now, metaphysically. Welcome to Credentials, your weekly dose of the nerdy essentials covering film, TV, video games, and comic books. I'm your host, Joe Tweeting, long but not lost. Yeah, the hiatus. Uh, we're all feeling it. It's been hard, it's been harsh. Um, but I'm not alone. I'm not alone. We're coming back better than ever. I am joined by two of my fellow co-hosts, brothers in arms that I have deeply enjoyed over the course of the last, shit, I'd say year, but we've been gone for a year. Damn it. All right. Well, circumventing 2022, because that's a lost cause. We're in the fall of 2023, and I am joined by none other than the sexy uh, wish.com version of Jeff Goldblum, the Nick Thomas. Down below, I will incorporate claps. Well, <laughs> Nick, how you doing? Fantastic. Glad to be here. It's been a while. Too long. God, it's like you've never left. The responses are spot on and perfect. Also, I'd like to throw over to the other corner of the new member slash old member now, even though the amount of episodes do not equate the amount of time We've been here, sadly, but still cherished and loved by all. We have the deeply satisfying, super sexy Wish.com version of Henry Cavill himself, the Ryan Coon. Welcome, sir. Welcome back. How's it going? Uh, it's going great, and I wish at some point, guys, I deeply hope that on our 200th episode, at some point, you guys can come up with the Wish.com version of What Am I? Because it's very generic. I'll give it some thought. Un- unremarkable. <laughs> Sorry, not depressed at all, but thank you, Ryan, for taking some thought into this. Um, I have to give a shout-out because he was in the credits. Dang it. <sighs> uh, but we still miss the fiery fiery red ginger himself who i tried desperately to get on our episode tonight the matthew johnson i'd i do a rest in peace joke it's long gone he's not dead he's just gone for now busy with family and we understand we'll we'll get him on in the fall sometime hopefully in october because that's when our uh yeah no i'm bringing it back guys i'm gonna say it now i'm gonna set in stone and i'm gonna help my cohorts here my co-host hold me to it 31 days of horror gaming 31 days let's do it 100 i've got i've got quite a library built up and i'm gonna try to throw you guys a slew of new horror games throughout the month of october and with any luck we'll do our top 10 favorites uh, horror movies and maybe more horror series because there's been a lot that's come out over the last few years. I just, I just want you to know, I just broed Matt 30 times. <laughs> you did what to Matt 30 times? Broed him. Bro. Bro. Did you, did you spam bro him? Really? <sighs> you know, if he doesn't respond to any of that, 
I think we gotta call that right, one on, right. That's that's the go to. God dang it, Henry Cavill! Put your damn Witcher hair away. It, thank you. It gets sort of away, but it's, it's, I see it dripping down your side. It's like, like a fairy tale waterfall. Stop it, you asshole. <laughs> Um, I think I want to throw this out there for all the listeners. Our goal, after coming back after all this time, is to eventually incorporate some more steady flow of nerd news. We keep up on it ourselves, and that's kind of like the staple of our early stuff. And then we slowly segue to the, whoa, God, the hair becomes the mask. Have you ever done an AI TikTok with the hair like that? You should. I haven't, but I'm going to now. Okay, now that I've put that in your thought, I'm going to later tonight post a video. You you remember the Spider-Man AI thing you did? Yeah. Because I totally did it myself several times. I came up with something super shocking. Didn't post it yet because I wanted to get your reaction. And right. I wanted to, I wanted to see your reaction. So, teaser to later in the episode. We'll do that. That being said, guys, we're going to do some catch up, some some personal first hand reviews, uh, hot takes on things we've watched, played, and seen since last we talked. Sadly, there's been a couple months in between since last we talked. So for now, the long short of it is, guys. Welcome to episode 128 of the podcast. If you're listening to us on the podcast, it's because you found us across all platforms that are podcast worthy. I don't have a script in front of me, so I'm literally going off of memory. However, that's the way to be anyway. It, usually, especially if you've been doing it a while, it's a good way to go. Um, Spotify, iTunes. Google Play and anywhere else podcast matter. We'll just keep it, we'll cut it there for now. Um, also, if you want to see the video version, you want to see our goofy shenanigans and a little bit of video in between, we are on youtube.com. YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash credential. Sadly, we came in super late and had to add in that stupid C for a channel. Anyway. Guys, type in credentials on YouTube. You'll find this. It's not not even a question. Also, you go, you could Google the name too, because that will show up everywhere. And although at this moment inactive, but will one hundred percent be reactive by the time I post this, is you can go to one special location. I look at Nick on the side screen and hope everyone's looking up at the same time. I was looking us up on Spotify. Oh God, that is fine. But also, I hope Nick remembers our special location to find all things Nerdentials. A nice little place called NerdentialsMedia.com. Dot com. God, there it is. There it is, Ryan. That is the the signature response. And that's okay. It's okay. It's been way too long since anyone's heard that. So... Thanks, Nick, for keeping it fresh, keeping it in the back of your memory banks. Um, anyway, guys, we're <laughs> we're back. The boys are back, as we joke about sometimes. Not on our videos, clearly off air. <laughs> anyway. Boys back down. Anyway, moving forward, here is where we're... I, uh, because this is a catch-up episode, we're just going to deliver the full set of um, topics. We're going to hit movies, TV, end with gaming, and then just say, "Hey, let's let's hop back on next week or the week after." But like, we're going to try to to jump back in. So here is the best spot to do it. That being said, guys. <clears throat> Let me cue up the proper background slash transition because it's been so long. Um, all of this is just going to be hot take reviews tonight, today, whenever you're watching, of what tomorrow. we've watched or tomorrow. <laughs> what, was it? 
what we've watched, played, or been into. So it's going to be very free form tonight. Thanks for joining us. We've missed all your beautiful faces. Guys, let's jump into Movie Matters. Welcome to Movie Matters. Guys, uh, in this segment, I'll put timestamps down below in our description of this video on any title that we're going to talk about, hot take or review tonight. Ryan looks heavy to go, like hot and ready, and so I'm going to... On my bed, so I get to bounce now. <laughs> it, it would actually be awesome <laughs> if you had a background that looked like the, the landscape was moving behind you. It would look like you were running. Yeah, yeah, like just shaky cam, shaky cam background. That'd be. Let me see what oh, I can do. So, because, well, that being said, while you uh, hotwire that potential scenario, uh, Nicholas, I did have an outline, but unfortunately, it wasn't an outline for news. It was just literally a list of all the things I've watched literally over the last, I want to say, month, month and a half, and I'd say it's fair. Then if we want, I'll just kind of recap, give our fiery impressions over just the last two months. Sadly, that's, you know, it's it's been at least a couple months since we've been current with each other and our audience. So I've got a huge list. And I'm curious, uh, is there anything, any one particular thing that you want to fire off uh in the last couple months that you've watched it could be the newest thing or something you finally caught up on because i've i me personally have a lot of catch-up i've done um, a lot of back watching i've seen a lot of i've seen a few movies recently actual movies in the theater well this is going to be the fiery topics for our uh, clickbait thumbnail and title <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to be. I mean, it is a catch. It's a catch-up episode still, but also I'd love to hear your hot takes on what whatever current things you've been able to catch. We're we're gonna call one of the ones I watched is uh, Michael Keaton's The Flash. I'm not gonna say Ezra Miller because he's a horrible human being. Tell me about the Michael Keaton fl Flash. Tell tell us about that, sir. Um. There were a lot of moments within the movie where I kind of just thought to myself, were they high writing this? Because they made really bad puns, really bad jokes at really bad times. Uh, some of the CG was questionable. Mm -hmm. Okay, a, a lot of the CG was questionable. It's okay. You can you can hold back as much or as little as you want. Be honest, though. Friends and family like to know how... With how much money and how much time they spent on making this movie, there is no reason, no rhyme, and no <clears throat> deniable plausibility that that should have been as the 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 CG is was as bad as it was. Hmm. Um. The, the, yeah. Other than that, there were parts in the movie that I enjoyed the hell out of it. Found myself laughing, found myself excited for seeing things I wanted to. Um, but overall, ugh, I couldn't get past the visuals of it. And it, it. and it hampered the whole thing for me. Man. And I, I, I yeah. went into it already kind of like, I don't know if I even want to watch this to support what every everything else about it yeah aside you know, from no no i i didn't want to support the movie for the what ezra miller has been doing and all the crap he's gotten into last Tor yeah year and a half nice. yeah no but i i went to it because it was a date night with me and my wife on our 14 year anniversary uh sorry <laughs> think feeling out loud it's a, I just I, mean like oh man I, yeah. I, I gave her the option 
of a few movies because I picked a few that I could do a review on. Um, and by the way, I'm going to give you my score. Um, That's fine. Totally. This, this will be the first score for a DC superhero movie you will ever get that th- that's this low. Oh, I'm man. giving it a solid four out of ten. Oh, man. It's Damn. not a, it's not a, it's not a surprise. Points, it's just a realization. Those four points are all from Michael Keaton. <laughs> I mean, he's a legend, so that's that yeah. makes sense. No, it, yeah, you it, can't you can't fault greatness. You can only fault. Yeah, no, it's 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 uh, silly. Uh, you could tell Michael Shannon did not want to be in the movie. The, so the recuts were not okay, okay. So we're not going deep. I just want yeah. to clarify uh, the scenes we saw, like trailers and otherwise. Of here, this cameo, that cameo. Those were fresh takes, not recut from old footage. No, it, it you could see that in the in the previews for the movie that he was back in there, and okay. quite. I was reading on it. Quite literally, he got the call and said, "Hey, we want you to come back to do this." And he's like, "Wait, my character died. Why? Why would I be back in this?" He was confused, and then he well, actually, sure. after, after everything was all sure. said and done, he actually came up and said. This was the most mind-numbingly stupid thing he has ever recorded. He's, he was like, "I didn't understand why I was even there." Damn, that's hard and, to swallow for anyone. And it, and it came through in his character. He's still playing Zod, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's playing Zod as if uh, Superman had never killed him. Oh, that, that's, that's right. The, that's They're the trying alternate, to erase Henry Cavill. Alternate take, yeah. Oh, it was man. actually completely different than that, but yes. But he is so, sorry. I was generalizing. Have not <laughs> General Zod, having never seen it. I do know. like where they went with the the Flash Point paradox. The, the overall um, story. Um, I like the direction they went with it. Um, oh, oh. I like the cameos in it, so stay tuned to the movie after the credits if you do watch it. Um, how many? How many? How many end scenes? One, two, just one. Okay, okay. So here's here's what I want to do just to like settle the the field of discussion because we, it, we could all go a lot longer knowing everything about it. Let me ask the question, and then if you feel like you need to elaborate, I open floor. Go ahead, right? So the question is, from 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 a perspective of a host who does in our podcast, I don't want to give away anything uh, beyond because I haven't even seen it. I kind of want to know your feelings coming out of it as much as you didn't care for the film as a whole. Knowing the direction of DC, the direction that, J- that at least what we know publicly from James Gunn's mouth, where does the end of this film leave you overall with where they're where you think they're gonna go? Let's um, do it that way as a fan. This the way they wrote this movie completely erases the Snyder verse and they did it on purpose. Yeah, of course. And That's what I, I expected. we all we all knew that. But but um, where where are you left feeling? I don't want to no spoilers, but where are you left feeling about where am I left feeling? I'm left feeling disappointed and upset because it was already written that they were going to do it. Michael Keaton had a contract to come back to play Bruce Bruce Wayne again. If this movie did well, they were going to do fucking Batman Beyond. We got oh, robbed from that hell. because of what we failed here. Well, okay. Now I'm pissed. All right. Hold now on, Ryan. Keep, keep going, Nick. Keep going. This feels fire. Keep going. No, no, no. Go Probably on. one of my favorite things to do with Batman time time period and all that is Batman Beyond, Terry mm-hmm. McGinnis, and the things they could have done with it. And having Michael Keaton come back as old man Batman for that would have been Amazing! Perfect. It would have been the right age and perfect. I would yeah, kill for that. Yeah, because uh, 
He's in his eighties in the animated series. He's in his eighties in the animated series, and uh, the actor is like end of the seventies, so like would have been good. Could have been good. Well, yeah, just just think about it. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) No, this this is like a whole podcast on its own. I just like I'm I'm trying to. I know I don't. I don't want to cut anyone off on their feelings and venting. I just want to see if you can compartmentalize the your your end, the right. coming out of the coming out of the movie feelings. Coming where, out of the movie feelings. Is there hope? Is there hope in Warner Brothers coming out of this? All right, coming out of the coming out of the movies. All right, Nick, I hate I'm to do that to you. I'm going to preface this. The week before, yeah. me and my wife went and watched another movie. We watched The Little Freaking Mermaid, live action. Or I enjoyed old. that more than this. Goddamn, and, Disney and, live actions have sucked, too. And, and, and I, wanted, I wanted to trip and fall down the stairs in the theater there and break my neck so I didn't have to watch it all the way. But I enjoyed it more than this movie. Oh. But... To leave you there, when my teeth are hurting. When I was leaving, I thought to myself, that trailer for the next DC movie is going to be amazing. I watched the trailer for The Blue Beetle, and that's what gives me hope. Because James Gunn is coming out firing on all cylinders. Okay. This is. I know we're all trying to like review catch up this and this and that, but but I feel I like I haven't seen any movies, so I'm here for the ride. I know I am too. I am too, Ryan. So like I I've done we've done a lot of catch up. I've done a lot of catch up on my own time. Shazam, Black Adam, I've watched a lot of stuff. So like I we're picking at Nick's brain right now for this episode. This is kind of the direction it's gone. And depending on how long this portion goes, this might be our whole episode. Let's see where it goes. Let's just write it naturally. Let's see where it goes. Okay. I'm okay with picking at Nick's brain for two hours. I'm okay with that, too. I'm totally okay, even if he thinks that's weird and awkward. Nick, come on, dude. You're, you're, you're the brainchild of, like, the, the comic book lore. You're like that wizard that Billy Batson went to. And like you know everything, but you're just you're an asshole and you don't tell us at all, right? You're in that space right now, and I'm trying to make it funny, okay? So just smirk. Well, yeah, but, well, I'm gonna tell you this when you go into the movie. Okay, go ahead, finish up, you, finish up on this movie. Ever read Flashpoint? Watched I, any, any media on Flashpoint? The animated you know movie that, was fantastic. I don't want to talk that, about that. I recently watched it myself, Nick. I've seen the animated movie for it. Know that the director and the writers made a smart choice to not copy it straight along. They took the idea of the Flashpoint Paradox Mm -hmm. and went a completely different direction on purpose. Good. So all the stuff you know in the Flashpoint Paradox isn't there. This is a completely different universe. Different good that he went off of. It needs to be, right? Yeah. And for the the movies, it has to be. Yeah, I was glad that they did that. And because I didn't want it tied to anything that I actually loved in this. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, and that's why I uh, got selfishly, dude. Like, that's why Warner Brothers did this. But it's, we hate that part of it. But this is why they did that. So they could walk away clean and move forward. We all know this. No matter how badly we hate it. There is a scene within this that something's happening when you watch it. This this yeah. was a part that I wanted to watch just for what happened in this scene. Um, Keep it vague. I'm I going to hold on. Worlds colliding type thing. Okay. And they're showing all the different universes, and oh, one God. of the different universes gives Crisis? us a ver- no gives us a version of a character that they talked about that we never saw. A never different- saw coming. No. A different version of a character we've seen so many renditions of. Oh. And they were going to make a movie with this actor. Oh. But they didn't. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Stop Superman. it. I, I, Stop I it. cannot. I can neither confirm nor deny. I'm right, aren't I? I can yeah. neither confirm nor deny. 
Damn it! Stop! God, you're okay. Like once you said, once you said, I'm like you could be lying right now. You could be gaslighting me. But once you yeah, said be, something we've be. all wanted to see for years. But all I'm saying, that that piece alone and Batman, Michael Keaton made it. Like I'm glad I sat through this. I. I bleach pouring session to watch this <laughs> oh, for that uh, for but for, for that. this this was worth the torture. Damn, God, I've got no B footage, no B roll. I can't cut away from the truth of what you said, dude. Sorry, no, no, no. Ezra Miller is thank you hard to watch. He would be if you've read the news, which no, is no, why not just that. Oh really? Actor, just acting when, the shit. Not a great actor. Playing the character. I it, it, never it's talking grating. About that. It's aggravating. He's annoying beyond belief. Mannerism, the way he acts. Yeah, like regardless of script, like it didn't matter what you told him to say. You just can't watch him. Is that what you're getting at? Regardless. Yeah, you know, well, because you could you could be like, oh, he's such a great actor. Oh, it was a shitty script. Like you can forgive an actor sometimes. For a shitty script, but you're saying Ezra Miller is it's beyond a script, it doesn't matter how bad the writing is, it's just too hard to watch. Come on, on record, okay, say it, Nick. awful to watch. Ezra Miller is awful to watch, regardless of script. I think that needs to be said. I, ah, oh man, remember when before all of this, before the release of this. We heard the allegations of his uh, creepy pub- shit, yeah. pu- public violence towards women. And I read the articles about, like, oh, damn it, like, Warner Brothers, regardless of their corporate entity image, they're trying to do something. They're trying to set things in a different direction. And their lead actor for this, I watched a Looper video. Shout out to you, Looper YouTube oh, channel. That yeah, they they do good stuff. And so, like they said, why did the Flash bomb? And like the number the number one focus of why the show failed is marketing was not just limited, but Ezra Miller was one hundred percent absent and no shit. Because who wants to promote a violent human being? Behind your flagship movie, that made every chance that the Flashpoint movie could have ever, ever done better. As I, I'd like to say this on record, and I will always say this, and like I'm, I'm a dude that's down for forgiving, but he's not interested in changing. He's not interested in fixing his shit, and for that reason, I'm gonna look right at you, audience. For that reason. I will never enjoy an Ezra Miller performance because he's a piece of shit human being. And that sucks to say from someone who wants to see hard shelled people do better. I don't care if he ever does better because it's not about the fandom. Even I hate the fact that he hits women in public. Like what the hell, what the hell is a huge corporation supposed to do? With a lead actor, imagine Henry Cavill. Could you imagine how much disdain I'd feel for Henry Cavill if he was violent towards yeah, anyone? Yeah, would break my fucking heart. It'd break all our hearts, and no I one was my favorite actor. <laughs> and Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think anyone was ever invested in Ezra Miller even prior to these allegations. Yeah, not really. Not I don't anyone think, I know. No one I know either. I don't think anyone had a heart throb for him. And then being a violent person in public, holy shit, burn the canister, move on. And that's what we have to do in this podcast. We need to move on. But I'd like to bring it back to a positive note, Nick. I love the fact that despite that piece of trash existing in Hollywood, that there were aspects of this film that tickled your fancy in a good way. And led you and led you to believe that there's um, some good direction that might come out of it. Yeah, yep. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Of no, course, uh, you know, this this universe is dead. Yeah, and we, we all kind that. of sadly knew that. 
Unfortunately, Warner Bros. is trying to distance itself from Snyderverse at all costs. And I think the reason why they pulled the trigger on letting this go, even though Ezra is Ezra, is because they knew it would bomb. And they did it on purpose. Well, They wanted something so bad to completely (sighs) shrapnel the Snyderverse. Okay. Again, this will be a whole. This could be a whole another discussion because I love to unfold the the feelings about this. You're not wrong at all. Like, what shocks me is like if Ezra was like the, if Ezra Miller was the focal point for all of this, even through the Snyderverse, it'd be like, well, there'd be so much hatred for one individual, right? But for whatever reason, I don't think he was a problem during the the. Justice League filming. I don't think Ezra Miller was a problem yet. I don't think he was then. And maybe we're wrong. Maybe he was. But it's so confusing and so disingenuous. We have no idea why corporate Warner Brothers has any problem with the version of Zack Snyder's DC Heroes. Like, none of that makes sense to me. And it still doesn't, in light of Ezra Miller's <clears throat> shit show of a flagship, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, Ezra Miller is a piece of shit human being, and yet we're still like, no, Warner Brothers wants nothing to do with Zack Snyder, but, but like, why? And, like, I don't want to dig into that now. That's a long conversation. But it's yep. still con- it's still confusing me, right, Ryan? It's it still doesn't make sense. Ezra is an asshole, but uh, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, yeah, uh, Henry Cavill. What's wrong with them? None. Those are starlight actors. Zack Snyder, is not the best director in the world. He went through a family tragedy, and Warner Brothers uh, took that opportunity. I say. Hired Joss Whedon to Marvel fight it during a tragedy that Zack Snyder was dealing with. So it's like, yeah. what is Warner Brothers' problem? And we we still stick around because they own our favorite property. That part kind of. And I hope all ends. It's like we're all collectively held hostage by a mega corporation who doesn't give a shit about us. It kind of, and it's so weird. Like they're still they're still afloat making money even though we're mad at them. It's like damn, yeah. damn it, right? Give so us what we fucking want, please. But I gotta believe that the handful of the the lower folk, the mid range folk, the the James Guns of the industry, have to to hope that their talent is so beyond anything Warner Brothers can understand. That Warner Brothers, I hope that Warner Brothers is leaning on him, leaning on that. Yeah. Because if, if no one's going to carry it, if the corporate themselves ain't going to carry the these properties, I hope a fan who's willing to suck a little... Sorry, didn't mean to be graphic. But meaning... Come on, if the Nick, pay- we got some work to do. <laughs> if the paycheck is big enough... For him, I hope that being the huge fan he is, that he can make waves through the stupid corporate that holds holds our IP hostage, right? That's where, that's where I land. If I could make a Red Hood movie, it would be brutal as fuck. If it if it was James Gunn, it'd be brutal as fuck, and that's where we're that's where we're sitting, right? Sitting, hoping, and wondering that uh, the biggest. Instead of going to Hollywood, I'm over this. I'm gonna go become a screenwriter. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Yeah. They're they're needing them right now with that writers. That's like a walk strike out. or something. Yeah, yeah big one. Wait. Will of it. It's my time to shine. Yeah, man, you should hop over there now and and join the picket. Yeah, I get to go back to my favorite place, California. <laughs> well, uh, guys, real quick. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna take a stock. Take stock of where we're at. Still talking movies. Still talking DC. Um, should we? Should I do some recaps of some DC films I've watched, and should we just just chop this up to like a a movie episode? 
let's let's go over some movies you watched, right? Okay, so you want me to just do some references of DC films I've caught up on? It doesn't have to just be DC, because I also know you watched a movie that I want to see, which is called The Super Mario Bros. God, mm. I want to watch that so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my wife didn't want to watch it. <laughs> no, it. No, no wives. Nicholas? But you and I go on a bro date. We'll watch it up on my flat screen up here. Hey, Ryan, you should either go over to him or have him log into his Movies Anywhere account because I bought it and it's available on Movies Anywhere. on my TV. What? Nick is like, wait, what? Nick, really? I've had it since it came out on video. Really? Come on, bro. Nick, Why have we'll, you... we'll make some popcorn you, and cuddle. You were here for me for Cocaine Bear, and I watched <laughs> it. Yeah, do you uh, don't remember? I'm, All right. I'm... I'm down for Mario. I'm down for Mario and Chill. Yeah, Mario and Chill is available for you right now, Nick. <laughs> right now, we own it. We bought it. We'll see if we can go get Kevin involved in this cuddle puddle. I love that. And if you guys could, like, I don't know, mobile phone it. You ain't gotta record it here. Just like record some off, off canter a little. Anyway, I need to get a, another drink I mean, to I refresh. Am single, and I'm not opposed to married men. <laughs> well, good. You got uh, well. You got one that's close to you. I can't speak for myself because I don't live anywhere near you. <laughs> I know, Ryan. It's the beard. It is fabulous. Yeah. As far I'm going to give you guys, uh, guys, I'm going to give my hot take on some films I've watched over the last month or two that your dear friend and host of the show has been behind and. Much to the chagrin of any fellow nerd or my cohorts here, they might be like, God, it's about f***ing time. You know what I mean? It'd be one of those moments. Okay. So, guys, not limited to, I'm going to just give you a hot take list, and then I'm going to ask Ryan and or Nick, or both, always both, um, if they want to hear any hot takes from a specific title. Uh, there's a couple that I will absolutely give you hot takes because I it needs I need to say something about it, right? One of those things. So, uh, over the last year, I was heavily out of the loop from Marvel and DC, and I just took a mental break from trying to keep up with everything because there's so much going on. But yeah. now I am so excited about so many things coming up. That it's left me being like, oh my god, I can't believe I hadn't watched these yet. And thank God for streaming services because HBO Max now rebranded as Max with an O in the A. Um, has all our Warner Brothers DC stuff. And well, Disney Plus continues adding their Marvel movies to their repertoire, which is great for me who can't always go to the theater. Having said that, we're going to continue the DC wagon for a minute. And I'm going to give you a hot take on three DC films that I have been way too long waited for me to see. (laughs) Shazam. Number one. I started chronologically because I was like, I know they connect. I know there's plots. I don't want to miss out. So, Shazam. Wait a second. <sighs> you just started the original Shazam? Yeah, the first one. Because the sequel just came out this year. I haven't seen it either. <sighs> Nick, Nick, I tried to avoid embarrassing our audience and my host by pretending that I've constantly been up to date. And... You know this is not 100% true. You know this offhandedly, even if you didn't want to hear it. You know I just love I mean? it how much it bothers Nick if I haven't seen something. It bothers <laughs> him if no, if all of us. like His network of friends is like, really? Really, guys? Like That's his feelings right now. His beard is turning more gray as we linger. Ryan, we need to fix this now. Okay. We are yeah, supposed to be yeah. the authority on all things nerdy. Yeah, get no, this shit together. And get Nick, it all in a box and get it together. 
Get it all together. Group. I, I watch all the anime. All together. I have no room all to talk. Together. I just finally caught up on Bleach. Oh, damn. Oh, well. You know, I've been you're... I've binged like 15 animes in the past two weeks. I was like, you're not the only one, Nick. I've been catching up on things myself. Not Anyway, let's move forward, guys. We all know all of us are behind in different areas. More than others and more in certain areas than others. So that being said, that's why we're trying to get back to it. The grind of the podcast, the community of friendship where we share our shit and uh, we share it with the public. That's that's where this is. That's our platform. Did we talk about the D&D movie last time we recorded? It was mentioned. Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, I wasn't sure. Nick Nick gave a hot take review. I do recall. Yeah, because he was in there. Person. We went and saw it together. Yeah, and really he did. and and Nick told me I need to check it out, and I didn't. But I can check it Bruh. out now. I can check it out now. You know why? Because it's Bruh. on Max. It's on Max now, not HBO Max, but Max. rebranded as a place to go. It's on there. I can watch it now anytime. And I've watched several before that. Hear me out. I'm trying to tell you guys. I'm trying to share. I will watch that one. I promise. Nick told me how much I need to. That being said, Shazam. Shazam. Most personal opinion, most underrated DC film ever, hands down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think Nick is shaking his head in agreement. I loved the first one. It was, I was like, yeah. you just got to say, yeah, dude. Like yeah. Un- when I say underrated, like it's like, yeah, like I knew your feelings about it. I knew based on trailers, it was going to be a fun ride. And I just did not know the level that I didn't know the level of depth and heartwarming feelings I'd have after watching well, it. Before you go and give your hot take on it real quick. Yeah. Where I said well, that, that I can't stand Ezra Miller in anything at all ever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On the other end of that spectrum, Zachary Levy is gold on screen. He's the Henry Cavill. I fell in love with his acting watching <laughs> Chuck. Do you remember Chuck? I yeah, didn't I see Chuck. it. I know about it. Oh, I know about it. Chuck I did not. Great. I haven't. I will watch it now based on what you're saying. I'll watch it now. Oh, Chuck was a fantastic bro. Yeah, Great Great last year, show. you're right. Levy made me cry in the first movie, and guess what? Even though critics were less than favorable the second time around, I cried the second time. God damn it, so oh, good. We don't listen to the critics. No, we they're, don't. They're no critics fucking suck. They don't know anything about anything. They just do it they, for the money. They mm-hmm. suffer from the mm-hmm. dumbs. They do. Mm-hmm. So that being said. Uh, just to like short tail, um, curve tail this, like let's keep moving forward. I'll make it brief. <clears throat> I loved every minute of it. God dang it. Like Billy Batson, like, oh, the, the heart, or the, the story is so well done. Foster care lost his mom, trying to find his mom for 10 years, blah, blah, blah. And then getting the gift of the wizard Shazam and the memes. I love the humor. This is DC at its best where it literally, I don't, I am so ashamed. I don't know the director on this one, Uh, but they played into the humor and it wasn't Marvel. It was DC humor. This was like personal close to the vest. It, it, it was meaningful. Like I love Marvel in the comics. I love Marvel in the movies. They, they have found a cookie cutter pattern and a lot of fans will say, yeah, man, 30 movies in, it's starting to get a little formulaic. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. A billionaire CEOs figured out, hey, what makes fan- generic fans happy about superheroes? And boom, that's what Marvel did. Does not mean that Marvel is insignificant. It, you can still enjoy Marvel movies, but... DC somehow found their golden child in a director and writer and Levy here for the role. And they, they found that sweet spot of humor, heartwarming storytelling. I literally teared up at the end of Shazam. 
that's my hot take. I gotta leave it there because it could do individual episodes about breaking down certain movies and would we'll totally do that upon request commenters on YouTube. You let us know. But I'm gonna leave it there for now. Heartwarming, heart wrenching, beautiful, well done. So <laughs> love it so much. Now Forward fast, I knew that Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who'd been vying for the role of Black Adam for way longer than anyone should, I feel bad for all of that, but he was the perfect Black Adam in this film. However, my short change hot take is I, 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 I still have to praise Shazam. When I look at what they did with Black Adam, I'm like, it was fun. It was dramatic. It was a lot of money spent on special effects, but I was still like, and I love the Justice Society characters. That's where Nick will agree with me. He's like, yeah, oh man. Certain characters will pee, but like Nick enjoyed this film for all those characters. Being able to see them in the silver light, the silver screen, sorry. But I think Nick will agree with me that it still sadly pales in comparison to huh, the Shazam film. The first one. The, it, they hit every note in the right way. It hit all our heartstrings. It was funny. It was wild and amazing. And I'll go against critics on Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. It was mixed reviews, but still did well. And... I was as emotional and just as heartwarmed by the sequel in Shazam. And I will go on record as saying I loved the idea and concept of Black Adam and Dwayne Johnson. But Zachary Levy as Shazam in the sequel and Fury of the Gods in his fun. God damn it. Kids in foster care. Kids of Shazam. They tease it at the end of the first one, so it's a spoiler if you'd never watched the first one. It's a huge focus on the second one, and it blew my mind emotionally, fanatically, cinematically. I loved Shazam Fury of the Gods more than Black Adam. The Shazam kids... The Hot Shazam take. kids were, were mm-hmm. so well done, and mm-hmm. the, how how it was done mm-hmm. was so yeah. impactful that Marvel needed to ride on his coattails and do the same thing with Thor with all those kids, mm-hmm. which is a of- cu- which is an amazing cute scene. I have watched it, and you agree with me, but you're also like taking that in context, like yeah, they they tried to do something similar. Yeah. I, I don't agree. I don't disagree. I totally I do agree. have to say though, Shazam Two has given me a newfound respect for Skittles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole scene, Ryan. You have HBO access. Please watch those two back to back. Nick makes a joke about Skittles, but it's a whole scene. It's a whole. F- Scene. Oh, I and you feel know, bad using your HBO Max because we don't have a section for the nerds anymore. So I just keep yeah, adding yeah. shit to your guys' watch list. Don't feel bad. <laughs> the unicorns, there are unicorns, and our sweet Darla, my favorite Shazam kid. Oh my god, I love her. She's a hugger. That's a that's a line from episode from movie one. I say episode like it's a show. Unicorns are not to be messed with, and when you watch it, you'll understand why. I've never seen, I've never seen Ryan scarier, darker, more aggressive unicorns in my life. Spoiler alerts. That's it. That's it. I left it so wide open. If you've never, it's not in any trailers. I don't think you can just find it unless you look for that scene, Yeah. which you will find on YouTube. Don't look. I'm not gonna. I know you won't. Uh, I was super, I was uh, like, I understood the cameo at the end of the first one. Head cut off. Oh my god. Warner Brothers at their best. I was shocked about the cameo at the end of the second one, Nick. And that's all I'm gonna say. I don't have at the end of the second one, but Damn uh, it. stay off the internet, Brian. Facebook, Stop. dude. 
Facebook ruins Facebook's everything. internet. That's internet. Yeah, I, I got to be on there to shit post though. Oh no, I'm not faulting you for that. Anyway, okay. Black Adam loved, but the Shazam films outshined both of them perfectly for me. I love Black Adam. It was a great, great little chapter in DC. Sad, sad, sad. The the Warner Brothers wants to delete the Snyderverse because Black Adam is Snyderverse. And I don't know where she, Shazam's going to end up. I'm sad for all of it. But Zachary Levy, perfect. So perfect as Billy Batson. I loved every moment of it. So good. That's my DC scope recently. Three films, boom. The what? Little Mermaid. My wife dragged me to this because she wanted to watch it. And I was resistant all the way. Makes um, sense. But I also grew up in the age of Disney. And some of the classic songs start playing and you hear them. And it's like, under the sea. You can't help. But yeah. Um, no, you can't. You yeah. Can't. Um, I like the direction they took it. They tried to keep it parallel with the original animated movie. Um, but they gave it a new feel. Um, I thought, uh, what's his name? Uh, the actor they chose for Trident was a good choice. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, My phone's forget dead. His name. And some of the cho- some of the creative choices they did to um, bring the mermaids to life was kind of cool, and I liked it. Um, I liked the fact that they didn't try to like anthropomorphize the the animals and stuff and make them kind of cartoony. They tried to keep them actually uh, very lifelike. Realistic. Yeah. yeah. Like found Flounder cool. was an actual cuttlefish. Yeah, well, and then Sebastian the crab was very realistic in the trailer. Yep. So, overall, for like... Your la- your lasting thoughts on um, this latest live action remake? They did a decent job on a live action remake. Uh, did I think it needed a live action remake? No, but it was a decent job. Um, the actor that actually played as Prince Eric, um, yeah, I, I, don't have I think he would be good. Yeah. I think he'd be good in a few few other roles, a few movies. Um, he has a very expressional face and he's physically built. So he'd be good for some other stuff. Yeah. So, all right. We, free, we can freestyle free ball this because I didn't put notes down, guys. Don't be mad. We'll be more prepared in the future. Director Rob Marshall. Okay. Uh, Hallie Bailey. Well, the intrusive cut. thoughts one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I like it. All right, all right. Good. Melissa Good. McCartney. Oh, okay. Melissa played, McCartney. Yeah, Jonah yeah. Howard King. Yeah, and Melissa McCartney as Ursula was brilliant. It was Ursula? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Javier Bardem played King oh. Triton. Javier Bardem. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I fucking love that guy. That'd be interesting. That, that was he super CG or just kind of like prosthetics? Like, how did he appear to you? Him just with fins? Him with a, a, a fin tail. Okay. Okay. Yeah, super curious. I mean, I will have to watch it ourselves. But so, okay. Like, you, you came into this saying you're not usually into the adaptation live action stuff, but. On the one to ten scale, and you didn't intend on going to this movie. What was your takeaway? What was your rating for it? Despite all that, almost a seven. Wow, hmm. that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad for someone who had no interest in going here, right? 
Yeah. And I the, hate the live action movies, and I'm not gonna lie, that's a good yeah, enough well, phrase to make me want to see it. I was like, most of them are sad cash grabs. I'd say most Disney fans could probably would agree that a lot of them are cash grabs. Um, Lion King, frame for frame CG, like the whole thing. Like, what? Still, um, haven't, still haven't seen it. What I haven't seen it either, so I shouldn't talk ill, but it's like I've seen enough clips to know it's a scene for scene total CG cash grab. It's like the only live action that I, one that I thought they've actually done well at was Tarzan. Oh. oh. There's a lot of Tarzans. I'm trying to rem- remember. I only remember the Brendan Fraser. No, this is the, that's yeah, George the Jungle. Oh George God, my bad. Anyway, this one had uh, Margot Robbie. Oh, oh, and uh, one of the uh, Skarsgård brothers, Bill, maybe. Oh, uh, well, that was that's, that was it. Uh, it. Yeah. Anyway, no, I remember. I vaguely remember now uh, what you're talking about, guys. It's been too long. We have enjoyed so much time together personally. Hopefully you have too. If you just discovered us, welcome to the fam. I got to say that right now. Uh, And maybe we'll make it a thing. I don't know. But like for now, the Godfathers, I think for that to be true, we need the redhead here. And then me and Ryan need to like, I don't know, grow 10 inches of beard for that to even be true. We can still call it the uh, Brotherhood, whatever. The interests of thoughts win with me too much, man. I'll never get there. It's fair. Well... Maybe one of these days. Maybe Halloween's coming up. October is around the corner. Maybe we buy some beards and do a fun. I don't know. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. I was irritated I didn't get a picture of it, but we did we did the braid on the side. Did you dwarven braid that shit? God, Nick, where's the photos? Come on. You're not going to do it here. Where's the photos? N- Next time, please. Okay. Photos. All right. But until then, <clears throat> guys, we're entering the spooky season. I've got uh, a lot of ideas on our, the, the gaming channel. I am going to bring back hashtag uh, 31 Days of Horror. Absolutely. I've been building up my library. I've been pre-recording some stuff. And... With any luck, I'm going to try to post a daily video in October of a new horror game that I've never played. And that's always been the f- my little fun goal to do. Um, but alongside the 31 Days of Horror, I'm going to try to keep you guys all abreast <laughs> of Game Pass releases. A lot of indies have been dropping. I'm going to try to keep those flowing. And I'm trying to come back to and finish Resident Evil 4 Remake. I know. I actually just started another, like, like my tenth playthrough of only it t- earlier tenth, today. Only is that it? I'm on professional again because why God, not? I know, I know. When I have access because of you, sir, um, and but that is an ongoing. I like I have epi- a part eight ready to go. I'm gonna po- post that this week. Hell yeah! Um, I just finally got freaking the dot uh the president's daughter oh, ashley you left the village i just got ashley and oh, in in, in well, this you're close, you're uh, close. It, it, in the video i'm gonna post i just got ashley um and if i was to promote anything check out today's player pass episode um the book walker just dropped literally indie title amazing freaking amazing Weird. I it's been so and me and Nick and Ryan will talk we'll guys will talk gaming next next time, next episode. So many amazing titles on top of all the triple A's that are about to drop over the next two months. So we're got a lot of catch up to do with gaming as far as the podcast goes, but for now, I just that was just a foreshadowing of what, what we're working on and what we're gonna bring to this channel. Um podcast though this will be episode 128 and um god so much more to catch up on we haven't talked in a good 
several Fortnites. All you nerds, you know what I mean by that. Several Fortnites. Anyway, so um, just some teasers. Hopefully we get the ginger Matt Johnson back on with us for some of that. And um, God, I can't wait to talk. Uh, a couple more teasers. Uh, Starfield. Fuck yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Brain blown, and <laughs> that that's big enough on its own. I uh, can't do any more teasers. That's that would be um, probably a whole gaming episode. That's gonna so. be a busy gaming time for me because it's gonna be both freaking uh, Starfield and uh, Lie of P. Yeah. That, I, oh my god, watch. that's uh, dude. There are so many things announced that are dropping in September and October. It's going to be freaking hellfire. And hopefully we can cover it and touch base with our viewers because this would be like the best time to do that, right? So, that being said, guys, thanks for watching. I got nothing else to say other than just like hit subscribe if you've enjoyed our conversation today. We're on YouTube right now. Trying to fire back up the main website, trying to get the podcast audio firing on all cylinders this week. Wish me luck, cross your fingers. All that being said, man, it's been far too long for all of us. And I think all of us feel it based on how much we don't want to stop talking. <laughs> so, guys, that being said, um, I'm going to lead into, and guess what, guys? I got it queued up. Don't worry. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Outro, there, there it is. Kidding. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to be cheesy anyway. <clears throat> now, if my gentleman at the table recall, we're going to keep it uh, short and simple. Thanks for watching. And... As always, nerds, we will all see you on the, on other, the side. other side. <laughs> on the other side. Thank you for the cascading effect, Mr. Ryan and Nick. <laughs>